Um, first of all, thank you for being here. So welcome to Troopers. Welcome to the dedicated SAP track. So it's for today. Um, yeah, and with that said, let us welcome our first time Trooper speaker, Ivan. Yes. And he will be speaking about the uh, IGS component in the SAP NetWeaver. So with having said that. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, I will speak about SAP IGS and uh, the the main way uh, the, the the main purpose of this talk is to share the way I use to understand how this component works and uh, how I managed to uh, find something on it. <laughs> so just let's start. A uh, few words uh, as a disclaimer. Um, uh, the vulnerability I will uh, disclose today uh, just patched uh, last month. So uh, I hope you understand that I can't disclose too much. So uh, let's uh, no, no exploits or something like that. Nothing at core, I promise, <laughs> normally. Uh, but I will skip the, the part of uh, what is SAP, what, uh, why it's important to secure SAP system, and, and so. I assume if you are here, you already know what, what, how SAP works and so So, A uh, few words, uh, one slide about me. Uh, my name is Yvan Genuer. Uh, I'm come from uh, SAP world. Uh, um, I was a SAP basis administrator during 10 years. And uh, since last, the, the last five years, I focus myself only on SAP security. Uh, I work for a French uh, company, IT services company named DevoTeam, and uh, I'm a CTF player, and also I like to create a uh, challenge, uh, sometimes uh, SAP challenge. <laughs> so. Um, so today we speak, uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, the first part is about uh, SAP AGS, all right. Uh, why, uh, why did I choose SAP AGS and uh, how it works? And after that, uh, each part is on a particular part in the SAP AGS. Uh, so I will speak about chart generator, zip services, pool services, image converter, um, a part about how to secure AGS components, and a few slides uh, as a conclusion. Okay, uh, why did I choose IGS? Uh, the first thing is curiosity. Uh, several uh, years ago, I sh just showed these uh, new services registered in my SAP gateway, and I just asked to myself, okay, what is, what is uh, this new thing, IGS? So, and the second thing is, uh, uh, the word is suspicious. Uh, I think you will uh, understand why. When you search for uh, already public vulnerability on this component, all right, just uh, on the security note or Googling, you find uh, one uh, directory traversal in 2005, another uh, couple of uh, security notes found by uh, Mariano Numez, maybe some of you know him, in 2006. Another XSS uh, in 2007, and uh, two vulnerability uh, related to um, uh, LibTIF and LibPNG. And that's all. There, are, there was only six vulnerability in a 12 uh, years old component. So this is why uh, I put myself on this uh, component and uh, I, I tried to, to, to work on it. Okay, uh, what is SAP IGS? Um IGS stands for uh, Internet Graphic Services, and basically uh, the, the component generates uh, charts and graphic. So, as an example, when you generate Hollywood charlet, okay, you know, on the SAP um, in the subsystem, the graphic and the charts are generated by uh, the IGS services. All right. Uh, it also provides another kind of services like a zipping file, a convert image, and so. 
Uh, you can reach the, these services by, there are two listeners. The first listener is named RFC listener, all right? And a second listener, the name is HTTP listener. So there are two ways to, to, to communicate with IGS. And this is a part of uh, basically all SAP NetWeaver since uh, 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 12, 12 years now. A few pictures. Uh, on the top, uh, this is uh, the listener, all right? Uh, so, the first process is the multiplexer. This is the name of the process in this, pro in this process. This is a, a, a NOS process. Uh, the, the, the process just handles the two listeners, okay? HTTP and RSC listener. The second process, important process, it's named port watcher. The port watcher uh, handles several interpreters, all right? The interpreter, it's... Uh, something like uh, uh, a little services in each port watcher. Uh, and it's uh, this kind of interpreter you need to ask for when you request something. So you can have several port watcher. By default, there are two port watcher. And for example, in this talk, I will, I will speak about how to communicate through HTTP on the multiplexer, send the request to the port watcher, on the XML chart, for example, and retrieve the, the, retrieve the things, all right? This is not very complicated architecture. So let's start. Uh, if you look on the system on the open port, uh, you find something like that, all right? So you recognize this is a process IGS MUX for multiplexer and IGS PW for port watcher. And the pattern, it's uh, very classical in SAP system. Uh, this is four, and uh, they use the since 10 number, and after 00 for RSC listener, 80 for uh, HTTP listener, and 0, 01, 2, 3, 4 for uh, each port watcher. All right. Um, another important transaction, it's uh, SIGS. This is a transaction, all right, uh, an administra uh, administrator transaction. And uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, administrator transaction of the IGS itself. So uh, on the on the um, on the bottom, you recognize all interpreter, all right, uh, zip, zip, zipper, XML chart, and so the the graphic itself is generated by IGS, all right. This is kind of graphic IGS could 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 uh, could do. Okay, I put the online help. Uh, the online help, there are a uh, uh, lot of documentation, but mostly about how to install, upgrade, uh, how to start, stop, uh, something like that. And uh, there are not a lot of documentation of how uh, the protocol wa works and how, what kind of uh, uh, HTTP request you need, to perf you need to send to the, to the, to the service and so on. But, yeah, not a lot of documentation, but uh, enough to start. Okay, uh, I will speak about chart generator. So this is this way. Uh, I try to communicate through HTTP, send something to the XML chart interpreter, and the port watcher do something and reply to the multiplexer who send, send us back the, the result. Uh, how does it work? This is from uh, the Honai help. This is the sentence you, you get from the Honai help. XML chart generate business graphic with XML based customizing and XML based data. And that's all. You do not know the format of the XML. You do not know uh, what kind of HTTP request you need to send. Uh, so, so uh, the way I use it, I uh, start from the SIGS um, transaction. And you can navigate uh, to the menu, go to test and chart engine. This is a template. This is like a demo of uh, how, um, how you can, uh, how IGS work uh, to generate uh, charts. So uh, we choose the name, okay, graphic IGS CE test. I Google in this name, this report name, and I quickly find it's related to uh, something called SAP chart designer, all right? Subchart designer, I will speak about uh, this, uh, this, uh, this tool uh, just uh, uh, a few slides after that. Uh, if you uh, search for security note or not uh, about Subchart designer, you find 
this, uh, this OSS nodes. And in these nodes, there are uh, several documentation and several uh, documents, and one of them called xmlformat.pdf. This is a PDF with a lot of, uh, a lot of um, a template about uh, a lot of example uh, about uh, what, what is the format of the XML you need to send to the IGS, all right? So here, uh, this is, uh, you get whole element, char data categorized and so and so. <coughs> so you can create your own uh, XML file. This is a very simple uh, XML file with uh, uh, data. So data.xml, and this is only one categorized and one value. And um, to speak with, uh, to discuss with uh, the, the, the HTTP, uh, HTTP listener, uh, after, yeah, lot of tests, <laughs> uh, I found uh, the, the type of the request, it's a post request, and the content type need to be a multi-part, multi-part type request. All right, so if you send something like that to the, to the multiplexer on the HTTP, uh, HTTP uh, listener on XML chart uh, interpreter, multipart, blah, blah, just send the content of the, of the data, uh, data.xml I just showed you before. And the, the IGS responds something like that with two links. Uh, one link, it's uh, named info, okay, and the second link named picture, and the picture, if you retrieve the picture, this is the graphic, all right? So this is the first achievement. <laughs> I can send something to the IGS and they, they, they return the, uh, a graphic. So where, uh, when you work on XML file, what is the first thing you, uh, one of the first, uh, first things you do is to test external identity. And it's work. So it, in this uh, data.xml file, if you uh, put the external entity at the beginning and the result in the, uh, in the category name, for, the, for example, you just change the categorize and display the file. But there are some limitation. It's limit to uh, 40, uh, 440 character. If you try, for example, if you try to retrieve the etc pass wvd, this is a too big file and nothing appears in the, in, the, in the picture. All right? So this is not very convenient. So uh, I tried to find a, another way to uh, where, I, where I can put the result of the, of the external entity. And I found this uh, report, Graphic Greasy Edimu. Uh, this report is uh, the sub chart designer I told just before. Uh, this report, uh, it's, for, it's to help customer to uh, customize the graphic. You can change the color, you can change the title, you can change the type of the graphic, you can do a lot of things uh, with, uh, with this report. And when you finish your work, you can save uh, the work in a file, and this is a customizing.xml file. All right? I noticed something. Uh, for example, in the title, there are parameter named extension, and this in extension, there are, they are uh, a link. All right? And uh, I just asked to myself, how, if I put a link on the customizing.xml and I send it to the IGS, what kind of uh, picture <laughs> the IGS uh, send, send back to us? So, uh, so I, uh, I save, the, I save the, um, uh, from the report, I save the, the XML uh, into file, I look in the file, and I, I retrieve whole element name of the XML uh, file, the format of the customizing.xml file. And uh, here you can, uh, there, there are how links, this is only uh, XML encoded. So I create a custo.xml, something like that. Very simple. I just put a link in the title. All right? And this time, so when I send a uh, hit to the, to the IGS, I send the data. This is the same data.xml file uh, I showed you previously. And I send this customizing.xml with only one link 
uh, on it, in it. And this time, they generate the picture, the info uh, file, and another the, a third file named <coughs> image map, all right? And if you retrieve the image map, you find how inputs are here. So I just, uh, maybe I can uh, use an external entity on the customizing.xml and put the, uh, the result uh, in, this, uh, in this input, in this link, and retrieve the file uh, after that. So this is uh, my new uh, custo.xml, all right? Very simple. And a little demo, so I script the thing. I try to retrieve uh, uh, the ETC password WD. I send it, uh, the first request to the IGS. The IGS answer with three files. You should take a look on the first file. They are how uh, the ETC password WD on it. And all this thing, it's uh, remotely without authentication. Uh, also, the first, the, the first new file, it's a HTM file, all right? And uh, uh, so I test something like that. Uh, in the extension, I just put uh, a little payload. It is an XML encode of a payload for uh, XSS. And because the header of the HTTP server, of the IGS HTTP server, the uh, there are basically no header is set. So, uh, Doing the same thing, uh, send uh, a request to the IGS uh, with an XSS as a, as a payload, uh, and take a look on the first file. If you try to access to, the, to this third file, you, you get the XSS on it. So this is another way to, to expose this, uh, this vulnerability. So chart generator, it's OK. Now I will speak about the, um, uh, the zip services. This is the same way. Uh, I will use HTTP request to communicate to, to HTTP listener and try to understand how uh, the zipper interpreter works. This is what, uh, what we get from uh, online help. Uh, zipper, zip, multiple input file. Thank you. So I uh, start from the same, uh, from the same transaction, SIGS, and of course, uh, SAP provide a lot of demonstration uh, reports. So go to demonstration zip. And this is a report when you can upload file, zip the file, and uh, retrieve the, 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 the zip file. So I retrieve the name of the report, the graphic IGS zipper demo. Uh, if you take a look on the Habab code in uh, AC Haiti, uh, at the beginning of the Habab code, they declare uh, a class, CLIGS zipper. Take a look on the class. Uh, there are several methods. One of these methods is called Wonder XML. And looking at Wonder XML, this, you can get all, uh, all the XML format you need to craft to send to the zipper. So, it's possible to, uh, to, go, to craft something like that. Very simple, request, compress, file, and one line by, uh, by file we send to the, to the zipper. You can precise name, the path. The path is the path in the future zip file. This is not the path on, on, on uh, my, my system or something like that. All right, so like the HTML chart, this is the same kind of request. This is a post request, multi parts. The first part, it's a zip file, uh, the XML file, who describe, uh, will describe the file we send to the, to the IGS. And after that, you need to send the file itself, of course. So if you send something like that to the IGS, it answers this time by Two links. The first link, it's a, a metadata file, all right? And the second link, the zip file, it's a zip file itself. Retrieving, well, retrieving the, this, the zip file, if you take a look on it, you find the, the two files uh, you just sent to the IGS. Uh, it's now uh, in the zip. So the zipper works. Good. To try something. Uh, I just the, test the input. Like, like probably normal uh, normal user, I send uh, 10,000 here, I send the ASCII table, 
I'll send something like that. And I, I retrieve uh, this error from the multiplexer. This is a, a message from the multiplexer. Well, then uh, the communication with interpreter uh, doesn't work. It's because the port watcher crash. So uh, to show you how, what's happened, on the top, this is uh, my SAP system. I just attach to the GDB the port watcher. All right, and after that, I go. After that, I generate a pattern of uh, 500 pattern, and I use this pattern to as a file name of the zip file. So, on the on the button, this is my uh, my export. I send it to the zipper interpreter. This file name, little bit big file name, and if you send it, everything crash. All right. You are on the return instruction. This is probably good. And as you can see, we own several registers. And you can find, by pattern research, we can find all the offset of the register. Um, it smells very good, <laughs> or very bad. It's, it depends uh, on the size. Um, uh, because we own the RSP register, and we are on the return instruction. So if you able to uh, to put something interesting is, uh, in this register, maybe you can uh, you can do something. So this is remotely with authentication, of course. This is a denial of services, and mm, uh, I'll search if I can export this uh, this uh, overflow, and uh, I fail. Basically, uh, the, 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 main, the main thing, uh, very, uh, very, uh, very important, it's uh, if you put a null byte uh, in the payload, if you put a null byte as a file name, in, in the file name, you never reach the vulnerable function. It's because uh, before uh, they are check, and uh, this check uh, verify uh, if how XML it's, uh, it's valid or not. And if you put null byte in the XML file, uh, you, you just uh, get an error. So uh, try to point uh, remotely without leaks, without uh, null bytes, uh, it's probably not possible. But if you have some idea, I'm, uh, I'm okay <laughs> with, uh, with you to discuss. So this is interesting. OK, spool services. Um, the IGS, Internet Graphics Server, also provide uh, some, something called uh, spool services. This is a, a, net, a net emphasis to a spool printer or something like that. So the name of uh, the interpreter name is uh, RSPO connector. How does it work? From the online help, you get this, provide an interface to communicate with printers. OK. Same things. Uh, I start from SIGS, navigate to go to demo, and they are go to test, and they are uh, uh, RSPO connector uh, reports. So, but this time, when you look on the report in the ABAP code, uh, I find nothing useful. I don't find the class name. I don't find, I, I don't find how it works, how, it, how, how it really works. So. So uh, I just begin to search for whole class with this pattern, CL star, IGS start. This is just because the previous class I found about IGS uh, uh, have this pattern. So they are, don't remember, 100, the result is 100 left, so this is not a lot of, a lot of results. And I found this, uh, this class name. So, and uh, this is here, RSPO IGS. And uh, if you, the RSPO, it's also the transaction code uh, in the sub guy uh, to manage the, 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 the printer. So this is why I take a look on it. So this time, uh, in this class, there are several methods. And uh, in the method, uh, there are no XML wonder, there are nothing like that. And if you look on the ABAP code, it, it, it's appear uh, the, the, the report craft some st string and send the string to the IGS directly. <coughs> so, so yeah, no, no XML input this time. Uh, I spend a time 
And finally, I find, uh, I find a way to communicate with this uh, interpreter. And you just, so, of course, this is a, a post request, multi-part request, this is it. And, but this time, you need to provide uh, each parameter uh, as a part of the multi-part uh, request, all right? And you find the name of the parameter to just read the ABAP code. This is, the, this is very, all right? Uh, I spend a lot of time on this interpreter. I fail a lot of time, and I need to admit, uh, I'm, uh, I haven't understood the purpose of this interpreter. <laughs> so uh, I try to uh, I try to create a SAP Sprint server. I try to reverse the SAP Sprint protocol. Uh, I, I try to, uh, of course, I test uh, the the input, but uh, uh, I find I only find a little thing. This is a simple SSRF. This is why uh, if you use a request name uh, get SAP Spring Protocol version, you can specify uh, uh, a host name and a port. And every every request uh, we get uh, the we get a return code in this file. All right, if you send it to the to the to the interpreter, and if if the target exists or not, you get a different error uh, different code in the in the error file. So it's possible to, uh, to perform some internal scanning uh, by just send the request to the interpreter and study the, the error log. So to show you uh, an example, uh, an attacker with, uh, with this IP address can communicate directly to the IGS. And uh, the IGS uh, also can communicate with another kind of uh, SAP system in, uh, in different network. This is this is classical. So the attacker can't uh, directly uh, reach the internal system. So it, it's possible to, uh, to script the thing. So the attacker try to ping and then it doesn't work. But you can use uh, this interpreter to, uh, to, to scan, for example, to scan uh, an IP address. And you can also uh, put a, a range of sports and uh, something like that. You also can scan for IP. So this is, uh, this is uh, just an example. And the in this way, the target, it's uh, obviously uh, an SAP system. So all right, um, image converter. Uh, what's a good idea to put an image converter in SAP? Uh, so. Same way, HTTP request to speak with uh, the multiplexer and try to, uh, to communicate with uh, the in interpreter named imageconv. From online help, services for converting one graphic format to another one. OK, why not? So you, whoa. <laughs> So you know the process, I start from the, the same transaction as IGS and go to demonstration and there are an image commenter report. Take the name of the report, uh, graphic IGS image conf demo. Looking at the report, uh, retrieve uh, the class name, all right? And looking on the class name, they are a render XML this time, so probably you can send uh, an XML file. And if you look on the render XML method, you can retrieve uh, the XML format. So it's possible to create uh, emg.xml, something like that. It's begin by uh, the size of the picture you, you, you want. Uh, the input, it's, uh, uh, it's a file type. And the output or file type you want. And also, there are a couple of parameters. Uh, this is an optional parameter. You can, uh, you can ask to the IGS to retrieve the image somewhere. And also, you can ask to uh, put the result under the way. Why not? Uh, a lot of tests here, uh, and a lot of failed tests here. I try to. Uh, I try to, uh, to, to, to request a very large image, 
doesn't work. I try, of course, to send uh, another type of file, but the, the list of the file type is, is uh, whitelisted, so hard to, to, to bypass. I also try to put a payload in a PNG file uh, because I, I like to play with PNG, so I try to, to, to put some payload in the PNG file and uh, it did not work, no external entity, I test all inputs, and I'll just find nothing during uh, several, uh, several days on it. But luckily, I think uh, I found something. Um, I was interested of uh, these two parameters, get URL and put URL, and uh, how, how all, the f all the things work. And uh, I was interested in how the HTTP request is made, because I think maybe I can host my own uh, HTTP server and uh, has to adjust to communicate with my server and I don't know, hack back or send a, a weird file or injection or something like that. So I look in on the binary uh, and look for functions like uh, converter, uh, get URL, and so. So if you look, uh, if you search for a function with a URL, you find uh, this function, image converter. So um, I put a breakpoint on it and uh, try to send something to the interpreter and uh, just study the, the function uh, step by step at the beginning and uh, understand how, how this function works. Um, one of, in my test, uh, one of my tests is to send uh, this, this one in get URL just because it's not a valid URL. And I hit, uh, I hit this, uh, this uh, check. This is a very simple check. It just it just verify if it just check if the uh, the beginning of how HTTP uh, of how input begin by HTTP. Of course. So uh, in this case, this is uh, this is uh, this is not the case. So the next jump is not uh, taken, and uh, uh, I expect it to uh, to to be forward to uh, error law, uh, error function or something like that. But another test is made. Maybe some of you <laughs> spot the things. <laughs> this is exactly the same test, all right? But this time, it try to look if how input begin by file. Uh oh. So yes, in get URL parameter and put URL parameter, I can put file slash slash uh, URL. So that's not good. Maybe, but uh, how how I can explore this kind of uh, thing because I I can provide only image file, no image or only picture. So you will see the the first thing it's to retrieve. You can retrieve uh, information uh, directly on the system because if in get URL you put file uh, the uh, URL of uh, SAP system itself file, all right, like etc passwd or whatever. And uh, it's depend of the of the error you get in the log, all right. And if you get uh, the log uh, error code one, it's uh, it means that the file doesn't exist. I, 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 the, the the interpreter, the IGS services, uh, is not able to retrieve the file. And if you get image data corrupt, it means they retrieve the file, but uh, it's not a valid uh, a valid file, a valid picture, or something like that. So, but it means the file exists. And it could be interesting uh, because remotely with authentication, you can get some information uh, about the target. Uh, it's work with file and also it's work with uh, directory, directly with uh, directory. So you can uh, test a lot of things and retrieve information and so and so and so. You can you can know if if they use some kind of uh, of uh, SEL file or secure storage or something like that. So if 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 this file doesn't exist, this is a problem. Um, another example: it's uh, you can brute force the SID. This is just an example. You can create a, a script to loop on all SID uh, SID possibility and try and request to the this image converter and try uh, every possibility of SID. So this is, uh, this is an example.
All right. Uh, one interesting thing is uh, the put URL. Uh, if you put something in the put URL with file uh, slash slash URL, uh, if the file exists, uh, it's overwriting. So you can do a lot of things with it. For, for example, you can, uh, you can know if uh, they use uh, uh, you know, the RFC ACL file, and uh, maybe you can overwrite uh, by a picture <laughs> this, uh, this file. And uh, trust me, the RFC communication doesn't work well after that. And you can do, if you retrieve the path of, uh, of uh, ICM web services or ICM uh, um, image, you can uh, uh, deface uh, web, uh, websites, something like that. And also, uh, you know, the SAP channel, uh, it's, uh, it's just a list of binary files, all right? It's, just, it, it's in a directory, and it's a list of binary files, and the file name of the SAP channel, it's well known because uh, you can go to the marketplace, download the archive, uh, and look on, the, on this archive, and you, you get the list of all, uh, all files uh, in the SAP channel. So it's possible. On the left, this is uh, my SAP system with the, the kernel, all right? And on the right, I just send, uh, uh, just send a script and I just overwrite all the, the SAP kernel with, uh, with an image. And the system still works, but uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> this is a new SAP getaway on the left. The system still works, but if you try to restart it or do something, it could be a problem. So, all right. Uh, securing IGS. Uh, a few words about it. Uh, I put the two security nodes. The first, uh, the first one, uh, it's released uh, last month, and it, they correct uh, 15 vulnerability in this uh, component. And the second one, uh, it uh, just released yesterday. Uh, so uh, take a look on it, and uh, and there are no miracle. So this is uh, just uh, this is uh, uh, the the IGS. Uh, it's uh, just a list of binary. There are two binary uh, and uh, several uh, library also. And so this is I don't know ten files. The IGS services is just uh, ten files. So just. Upgrade, upgrade your kernel, and uh, this is not SAP upgrade, this is just a kernel upgrade, just uh, uh, get the new version, and uh, so. This is, uh, th there are no another way to, 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 to patch this uh, this way. A couple of parameters, the first parameter, it's uh, about uh, the uh, HTTP admin page. Uh, I haven't talked about uh, the admin page in this, uh, in this presentation, but, uh, with this uh, parameter, IGS listener HTTP, uh, you can enable uh, the administration page. This is like the same of SIGS from the side guy, but through, directly through HTTP, without authentication. So uh, there are uh, there are some some uh, some issue on the on the admin page. So if you can uh, put this uh, this parameter uh, to the default like that, this is good. And also a new parameter. Uh, this is uh, introduced uh, last month the, in the last release, and it's uh, it's uh, it's able to uh, to disable or enable the put your well uh, option. You know, in the the option when you can overwrite a kernel. All right. Uh, there are some traces. So the IGS is very uh, tra can trust a lot of things. Uh, all the attack I'll show, show you. Uh, there are a lot of trust in the in this file. So get the get the the, the, the trusses, retrieve the trusses, and put uh, at the same way uh, than other SAP trusses like uh, RFC, HTTP trust, and so and so. Uh, IGS test. Um, at the beginning of uh, when I begin to work on the, this component. I think about uh, hey, maybe I, I can create uh, a, a little tools to perform uh, remotely uh, uh, to perform remotely assessment uh, on the IGS. Uh, so 
I begin to think on it, and uh, I forget the ID. <laughs> it's just because uh, in, uh, I wouldn't create some something like uh, a weapon, you know. Uh, so uh, the 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 tools uh, the, the, the the tools testing what is just testing the version of the IGS, and if the version is too old, just display a warning. This is not very interesting. But I forget this idea, uh, but I do another thing. Maybe some of you know PySAP. So what I did is uh, I reverse uh, the IGS protocol. Uh, so I speak about uh, HTTP listener today, but you can also uh, also work uh, with uh, the RSC listener. All right, this is the uh, other side. And I reverse the protocol and I had this uh, new IGS layer to, to, to PySAP. So thank you, Martin. <laughs> and uh, so this is, uh, I'll let you take a look uh, on it. So, and uh, all the demo I just show you, I use, uh, I use PySAP in the, in the, in the script. I also add uh, this layer to uh, SAP dissection. SAP dissection, it's a plugin for Wireshark. And uh, so now if you use this, uh, the last version of, uh, wire, uh, of this plugin, SAP dissection, you, can, you are able to uh, understand more easy how the, the, the IGS protocol works. So this is good. And both um, uh, PySAP and, uh, and uh, of course the Wirechat uh, support the RFC and the HTTP request. Uh, I will provide some PySAP example script, but not today, maybe in uh, two months. <laughs> and both is ready for two parts. So tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, uh, before the end of the week, I, I hope. This is ready, this is ready. <laughs> Okay, a few words as a conclusion. Um, I was very, uh, I was a little bit surprised by uh, this component. Uh, not by the number of vulnerability I found, this is not the, the thing, this is just, when I begin uh, to, 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 to work on these services, uh, I just know nothing, and uh, I just discovered that there are several, uh, several interesting things, like, uh, networking, uh, web stuff, uh, SAP stuff, and something like that, a little bit of reverse. So the, it was very, very, very interesting. And as you can, uh, as you saw, this is not very complicated. Uh, so the, if you are interested on it, just, uh, uh, just come to me and you can uh, share uh, on, this, uh, on this subject with, uh, with pleasure. I put uh, all the um, all the, the the link where I use, particularly for PySAP, SAP dissection, and uh, uh, the GDB PEDA. GDB PEDA it's a GDB uh, plugin to uh, when you can create pattern and uh, and something like that. Very useful. And uh, thank you, everyone.